Hello everybody and welcome to Bespoke on a Budget. Now I am going to be talking directly to you for just a couple of minutes to kind of give you a little background on uh, this video and what you're about to see. So if you aren't interested in this, go ahead and take your mouse and uh, scoot forward a little bit in the video and get right to the turning. But I think you should probably listen to this if it's your first time. Back in 2023, I got asked to come to several pin shows and be a demonstrator, and I needed something that I could show the audience. And I came up with the idea of doing bespoke on a budget because so many people want to get into bespoke turning, but it can be a little bit costly when you go out and buy all of the fancy tools. So my objective was to teach you how to make a bespoke pin using items that you would probably already have in your shop in many cases, but if you had to go buy them, it wouldn't break the bank. This video is really not meant for people who want to make and sell quality bespoke pins because it's, it's a primer to making those. I'm going to teach you techniques that you can use to make very high quality bespoke pins. The issue is the tools that we'll be using are not the proper tools. The drill bits are close enough. They're not the exact diameter. The taps and dies are not the exact thread count or the exact size that we should be using. So you're going to be able to make a bespoke pen. It's just not going to be super high quality. It's going to be loose. But the techniques are the same. And after you make a few of these and decide, you know what, bespoke pen turning is really for me, then you can start buying those tools. You, one year, maybe you can add some taps and dies. The next year, maybe you add a tenon cutter. And you can continually do that and up your game. The technique is the same. You're just buying the quality tools to give you the tolerances that are going to make a high quality, sellable bespoke pen. So this video is truly for the person who wants to try bespoke pen turning, but doesn't want to break the bank. The pens that you make can be considered a bespoke pen because you're making every single part except the ink refill. The pen that I'll be showing you how to make in today's video will be dimensioned for a Schmidt refill. Now you can very easily take a Parker or a Cross or any other refill you come across and using the techniques I show you, you can take your measurements and change the dimensions of this pin to fit that refill. You can change any dimension of this pin. You can make your section longer. You can make it shorter. You can make the pin body long. You can make it short. You have tons and tons of options. So I urge you, after you make that first pin and you're ready to do the second one, Think about it. Maybe change the dimensions a little bit. Maybe change the shape a little bit. Make it unique to you, something that is appealing to you because then you're going to enjoy making these pins even more and it's going to encourage you to continue down the road of bespoke pin turning. Now, I've said the word bespoke a hundred times. I also like the term artisan, artisan pins. Uh, do not, under any circumstances, call these kitless pins. You will be a pariah in the bespoke artisan pin turning community. They are not kitless pins, they are custom pins. That's another nice term you can use for them. What I'm gonna do right now is throw up a slide that shows a Schmidt refill, a drawing that I did of a Schmidt refill and the measurements that I took. This will give you an idea of how you can re-dimension this pin for a Parker or a Cross or any other refill. Before I take you to the lathe, and we start going through all the steps involved in making a bespoke artisan pen, I want to turn the camera around and I want to show you a couple of quick examples of this is the exact same pen using the exact same method. We just changed it up a little bit. Let's take a look. When you start out, it may be easier to make this style. I call this a desk pen. And basically it's just a section and a body. There are no threads for a cap. And we've got our Schmidt refill. It's super simple. You'll require less tools. This will be a great way to get started. And then if you like it, you can go and add uh, the tap and die to make a cap. This is pretty much the same pin. The only difference is I turned a cap for it. Now, if you take a look at this pin next to the desk pin, you'll see a few slight differences. This pin is a little bit fatter and I had to make the diameter a little thicker uh, because I needed to have a tenon for the threads and I had to have a shoulder at the back of that tenon for the cap to uh, post against. I put threads on the lower part of the body. You can see the interior is exactly the same. 
and those threads are cut to the interior of the cap so that we have a nice cap for our pin. And finally, once again, exact same pin, I just used the entire blank instead of cutting it off. And quite honestly, I should have cut this one off maybe about here, and it would have looked a little bit more uh, normal size. It's a little long, but uh, it's not bad. And if you open it up, now obviously I didn't use the same material, I used what I had available, but uh, it is identical to the other two pins. So you can see with just a minor change, you can change the entire look of your pen. To make these pens, we're gonna start off with two acrylic blanks. Now, when you purchase your acrylic blanks, talk to the vendor you're purchasing them from and let them know that you're gonna be threading these blanks because some acrylics do not accept threads very well. They are hard and brittle and they actually chip out and they just will not accept a good thread. Now, there's the uh, number of this blank and these particular blanks must have some something in them that allows them to accept threads because they do a very nice job. We're going to be using a collet chuck to do most of the work on our blanks. When you purchase a collet chuck, it's going to come with five spring collets. The largest diameter you get is usually three quarters of an inch. So what you want to do is you want to take these blanks and you want to true them to right at three quarters of an inch. And here's what they'll look like. There are many different ways that you can true your blanks. I happen to have a set of pin jaws, so I'll grip the blank in the pin jaws, turn the end of the blank down to three quarters of an inch, then I'll remove from these jaws, flip it around, put it into my collet chuck, true the other end of the blank, and I can begin turning my bespoke pin. If you don't have a set of pin jaws, maybe you have a set that has a smaller set of jaws in it. You can always grip it in these and do the same procedure. Turn half the blank down, flip it around, put it into your collet chuck, and true the other half. And finally, there's always the old tried and true method. It's not the best for acrylic, but it does work. You can use a drive center and a live center and true your blank between the headstock and tailstock of your lathe. After your blank is trued, insert it into your collet chuck, tighten down your chuck, and I have found that if I tighten it by hand, I can get it tight enough to perform this procedure. You're gonna start by truing up the exposed face of your blank, then bring your live center up for support and we're ready to put a tenon on the end of our blank. Set your calipers to 0 0.310 inches or 7.88 millimeters and transfer that mark to the end of your blank. Turn down the end of your blank to 10 millimeters in diameter. I found a really easy method for turning the tenon is to just get it close to 10 millimeters, let's say 10.5, 10.8, even 11 millimeters. Then I'll grab a 10 millimeter box wrench and you'll notice this one, I have put it against my grinding wheel and I have squared off the short edge of the wrench. It makes a nice sharp cutting edge here. And if you get this tenon close, you can lay this wrench on your tool rest. You can let the long edge touch the bottom of the blank and you can slowly push this wrench into your blank until it completely covers the tenon. At that point, you know you have a perfect 10 millimeter tenon on your blank. You'll notice that I put a chamfer on the front edge of my tenon. That's just gonna make it easier for me to start my die. You'll also notice that I put a relief on the back edge of the tenon. What this is for is this is gonna be our section. When we insert this into our pin body, if we do not have a relief back here, you have threads all the way to the end, it's gonna lock in so tight against the body when the body and the shoulder of the section meet that you're gonna have a difficult time removing the section from your pin body and it can cause breakage of the section tenon. I went to eBay and purchased an inexpensive die wrench as well as an M101 die. Now, if you're interested in any of these tools, I'll have a link in the description that will take you to a tool listing for all of the tools that I'm using in today's video. When you're ready to cut your threads, you wanna back your tool rest off just a little bit and you can take your die wrench and slide it over your live center, bring your live center up, lock it right against your tenon and this will help you start your tenon as straight as possible. The other thing you can do is you can take the live center out of the tailstock and you can use your tailstock to bring the die wrench right up to 
the end of the tenon. Either of these methods will help you get a nice square start on your tenon. So you're gonna start turning. About every turn, give it about a half a back turn to clear the threads. And we're gonna go until the tap, I'm sorry, the die bottoms against the shoulder of our blank. I'm gonna remove my tailstock. And then we're gonna back the die off of the tenon. Using a soft bristle toothbrush, clean your die as well as your threads. Notice how nice and deep they are. Once we have everything clean, we're gonna pop our die out of our die wrench. And you'll notice the writing on the die, that's the face of the die. The open diameter on this face is larger than the cutting diameter on the back of the die. So we're gonna flip the die around, put it back into the die wrench, and we're gonna rerun our threads with the die reversed. This time, we already have threads. I'm just gonna start slowly. We'll let the die catch, and we'll go ahead and run all the way back to the shoulder. You might see a little bit of cutting happening, not a lot, but we just wanna make sure that our tenon has the same diameter threads from front to back. Once again, we'll clean everything up, and we're going to inspect the relief on the back of our tenon, and if you look closely, you'll notice that it is about the same diameter as the threads. I need to make this relief a tiny bit deeper. Using our eighth inch parting tool, we're just going to clean up our relief. And we have some really nice looking threads on our section. I've checked up a quarter inch bit and I have marked that bit at 0.922 inches or 23.42 millimeters from the cutting edge of the bit. And by cutting edge, I mean right here where the bit starts cutting, not the crown of the bit, the cutting edge. Now we're going to drill this depth into our section blank. I have chucked up and marked a 3 16 inch bit at 1.09 inches or 27.70 millimeters from the end of the bit. And now we're going to drill into our blank. Note, I started with the largest bit first and then I am downsizing the bits as I move forward. There's a couple of reasons for that. First off, if I drill a small hole first, smaller bits are flexible. As they're going into the blank, if they get bound up at all, they'll start to veer off center. By drilling with a larger bit first, it's a thicker bit. It's gonna help me get a truer hole. The little crown on the end of the bit forms a nice little dimple that the smaller bit will find before it starts to drill into the blank. This helps me keep my holes straighter through the drilling process. We only have to drill a very small distance because this is covering the shoulder only of the Schmidt refill. Our final bit is a 7 64 of an inch bit, and we have it marked at 1.81 inches or 45.98 millimeters from the end of the blank. This particular bit, you wanna clear more often because it is so small, there's not a lot of room for the chips. And don't worry about going a little extra distance with this blank. All it's doing is making sure that we drill through the end of our section so the nib can protrude. And if we drill into the cap of our blank, it won't matter because we're going to take a larger bit and drill that out so that hole will disappear. My blank already has a line drawn on it and I put that line there right after I faced the end of the blank. This line is at 1.968 inches or 50 millimeters from the faced edge of your section blank. We're gonna start by turning away a little material on the back of this line so that we have room for our tool to move. 
and then we'll begin shaping this blank into the shape we desire for our section. With our section shaped, we're ready to part it off from the cap blank. Now, this is the end of your section. This is where the line was. This is the material back here we turned away to give us room to get our tool in there for shaping. You want to part the section off of the cap blank back here. Otherwise, it's gonna be too short and your ink refill, the nib of your refill, is gonna poke too far through the end of the blank. So start by turning this down and then part it off right here. What's gonna happen is your section piece will be too long and the ink refill, the nib, will not poke through the end of the section. Don't worry about that. We can sand that away and make it fit perfectly in the final shaping process. One last note I wanna make. If you plan to use a cap with your pen, you need to make sure the diameter at the back of your section is just under 12 millimeters. Otherwise, your cap will not fit over your section. Once your section has been parted off of your cap blank, go ahead and face the exposed end of the blank. With your ink refill installed in your section, measure from the outside edge of your tenon to the tip of your ink refill. Note that measurement because that's the depth we're going to drill into our cap blank. I have a 31 64 inch bit chucked up and I redid my measurement off camera to make sure I was accurate. And I found that from the end of the bit, I need to drill 2.047 or 52 millimeters into my cap blank. Now, a little tip with this, you wanna drill maybe a millimeter or two deeper because you do not want the ball of your refill rubbing up against the end of your cap. So we are going to drill 53 millimeters into our blank. I have an M13.1 single start tap that we're gonna to use to put some threads inside of our cap. When you install this in your Jacobs chuck, do not grip it by the squared off end, because if you do, there are three jaws on your chuck and there are four sides on the uh, tap. You will not grip it squarely. You wanna push it all the way into your chuck until it bottoms out and you wanna grip it by the round section or the shaft of your tap. Bring your Jacobs chuck up just shy of your cap blank, lock it, and then back your tailstock off so that the Jacobs chuck can spin freely. You don't want to back it off too far because you don't want it to be wobbly, but back it off just enough where it spins freely. At this point, you're ready to begin threading your cap. Remove your cap from the collet chuck and place your second blank in the chuck. Square the exposed end of the blank. Set your calipers for 0 0.310 inches or 7.88 millimeters and transfer that mark to your blank. You wanna turn the material away from the end of your blank to form a 13 millimeter tenon. After you've cut your tenon, chamfer the front edge of the tenon, put a relief on the back edge and thread the tenon with an M13.1 die. Thread your cap blank onto your body tenon, shape and finish your cap. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind. You drilled a 31 64 inch hole down the center of this cap, so you do not want to get too close to that dimension, otherwise you will make a very nice straw. Also, when you're shaping the cap blank, go ahead and shape all the way back onto the body blank as far as you can go toward the collet chuck. Sand and finish that as well. What that's gonna do for you is it's gonna give you a cap that matches very nicely with your body. And we can also use that whenever we shape the body to know how far down to shape the body so that it continues to match nicely with the cap. Place a 23 64 inch bit into your Jacobs chuck and drill 0.395 inches or 10.5 millimeters into your blank. Chuck up an M10-1 tap, once again gripping it by the shaft. Release your tailstock so that your Jacobs chuck spins freely and tap your body blank. Be very careful when performing this process because you're gonna hit the end of the hole you drilled and you wanna feel for that because once you hit that point, you wanna stop. Don't continue tapping or you'll strip your threads. 
thread your section into your body blank and shape it. Hold off on finishing it for a moment. Periodically, you wanna remove it from the body blank and put your refill into the section. If the refill doesn't stick out far enough from the end of the section, you need to sand away and remove a little more material at the end of the section. Once you get a nice fit and you're satisfied that the nib of your refill extends a reasonable amount from the end of your section, you're ready to place it back into the body blank and finish your section. Place your refill into your section and measure from the shoulder of the section to the end of the refill. I get 2.642 inches or 67.13 millimeters. Mark your quarter inch bit to the depth we just measured. We're ready to drill our blank for the refill. Note, this is important, stop about a quarter of an inch shy of your mark. At that point, we are gonna test fit the section and refill and we're going to sneak up on the final depth that we need so that we can keep a very tight fit with our refill. Do not worry if you drill a little too deep, you can always take the spring out of an old ballpoint pen, cut it off and put it in the back of the blank, or you can take a piece of material, you can turn it on your lathe to a quarter of an inch, cut a sliver off and put that inside the blank to take up any distance you drill too deep into the blank. It's best if you don't have to do that, so take your time and sneak up on it. Once you've drilled to the proper depth, your section should fit nicely into your body and you should have the perfect extension at the end of your refill and there should be no play in the refill moving in and out of the body blank. To finish the body of your pen, you want to make a mandrel out of another blank. This is just the reverse of the interior dimension of your body blank. We turn the blank to three quarters of an inch. We put a 10 millimeter threaded tenon on the blank and this is a one quarter inch tenon that will fit inside the blank and it is the length of our blank. Thread your body blank onto your newly created mandrel. Mark your blank for the length that you want your body to be. Now what I have found that is really aesthetically pleasing is if the body is about one and a half times the length of the cap. So I'll take the length of my cap, I'll add about half that distance to it, and I'll mark my blank. This is how far back we need to turn. Now remember, probably about this much of the blank was sticking out of the collar chuck, and when we finished our cap, we turned it down and finished it as well. So we've only got to turn from here to here, and we just need to blend it. So it's pretty easy to do with the tool, but as you're sanding, what I would recommend is with the, the higher grits, the 120, just barely sand over that line. With the 220, a little farther, 320, a little farther, on and on, to where the end of your blank still is relatively finished, but you've just blended it in. Now you take your micro mesh pads and you finish to the end of your blank. Once it's finished, you can part it off, you can polish it, and you have completed making your bespoke pen. I really hope you enjoyed my introduction to Bespoke on a Budget. It was a lot of fun putting this together and doing the presentations at the shows. Uh, I want to let you know I didn't do any turning in the video and I tried to use pre-prepared blanks wherever possible simply because there was so much material to cover that this video would have been an hour and a half long had I done the whole process. And I wanted to give you all that information and I gave you everything you need to know. Drill bit sizes, dimensions, depths, everything you need to know is in this video. However, if you would like a hard copy of this, I have the presentation that I did at the show. It's extremely detailed. You can go over to my Etsy channel. I'll put a link in the description of this video and I am selling the detailed plans at my Etsy store. They'll be very reasonably priced. You can get them in a PDF format, download them, take them into your own shop, use them to learn how to do bespoke on a budget and make any type of marks on the papers you want to tweak them to your personal specifications. I want to thank you for joining me for this video. I had a lot of fun making it. I hope you found it worth your time. If you did, great. If you didn't, I apologize. But I wanted to get this information out so that more people can start down this path as inexpensively as possible. Thank you so much once again. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening.